Hi, good morning. All right, guys. Um, to start off, we're going to be talking about tokenization, a very hot topic recently. I think there's a lot of conference, a lot of meetings this, uh, this week about real-world asset tokenization. And we're going to talk specifically from the angle of Japan. But before we get into it, I want to first talk about where we are in this kind of crypto blockchain evolution. I think it's always important to know in terms of historical context, you know, where, where, we, where do we come from, where are we headed? This is just my own personal kind of way of uh, splitting up the phases of the, the crypto evolution. For me, after the, uh, you know, the, the great financial crisis in 2009, the first six, seven years was the inception phase. I think a lot of us would agree that we didn't really know what's going on with crypto. I was at Lehman Brothers, and I never imagined that Bitcoin was being invented in the midst of the financial crisis. And for the first six years from 2009 to 2015, this is when Mt. Gox was formed, lots of limited interest, but lots of stuff going on in the background. And things started to change from 2016 onwards, in my opinion. Regulation started to come in. It's when I noticed about crypto as well. You know, I started really paying attention around 2016, 2017. And I call this phase the speculation phase. It's when there's a lot of exchanges propping up, uh, regulation coming into line, uh, lots of different products, CFDs, options, everything is being uh, you know, implemented. And ultimately, as we know, we had a major implosion at FTX in 2022, and then we kind of went back into crypto winter. So I like to call that the speculation phase. The question is, where are we right now? And I think right now is the time we need to find utility in this space. A lot of people are interested. There's lots of projects, lots of tokens going around. But what's the real utility in a lot of these projects and tokens? And I think from 2023, 2024 onwards, that's going to be the next phase. And that's why we see so many real-world asset tokenization, STO conversation going on even at Token 2049. Before we get into this utility phase, a little bit of backdrop, because I get asked this all the time. ETF issuance. A lot of people say, what do you, what do you think, Phil? What do you think is uh, the ETF issuance? Is this going to just you know, rocket uh, crypto to the moon? One thing that's really important, um, I speak to a lot of chairmen you know, that, that, that runs crypto exchanges like in Japan. Now, the tax laws, the regulation laws between spot crypto and ETFs differ at the moment. The fact that crypto ETF is now uh, introduced to the market I think means that we're going to have a standardization of lots of these weird regulations and tax laws in crypto. Because you can't have a retail customer that can buy uh, crypto through an ETF, but when you buy spot crypto or other kinds of uh, crypto derivatives, you get taxed differently, you get treated differently. So major implication about ETF issuance, it's not just about increasing speculation market cap, but it's also going to standardize the rules uh, uh, for people to trade crypto. The other thing is FTX. <clears throat> you know, I don't want to necessarily you know, point their name out too much, but there is an implication, and the implication is credit risk. So when I used to be the chairman of B2C2, everything was bilateral. You know, pe we used to trade directly with the clients. Those days are rapidly coming to an end. There's going to be credit intermediaries, prime brokerage service, and these are going to be the backdrops that we're in right now in this utility phase. And real quick, it's important to talk about the utility phase because we, we need to answer the fundamental question. Why is crypto going up? Why is the market cap continuing to increase? And, and the truth is, there is utility in crypto right now. As everybody knows, Bitcoin's a great way to send money, uh, stable coin as well, and then you have smart contract and programmable money. But there's so many different projects, and a lot of times we can't answer, well, why is the value going up in some of these projects? To me, it's very simple. We had COVID, we had central bank expand the QE, while governments issued tons of handouts, overstimulated economy, we're in an inflationary phase, and now, believe it or not, even though central banks are trying to cut back on QE, governments are still ha issuing handouts. And you can see that throughout the world. Where we are right now, I find it very significant that last, last week, the President of the United States literally said, we're going to cut rates after very high inflation print. So what do we do in a situation like this, and why is this happening? The bottom line is that deficits are blowing up all over the world, and soon interest payments, interest repayments by government alone is going to be the biggest expenditure. So no matter what country you're from, governments are going to start talking about cutting rates. And then we're going to be scratching our head and say, well, wait a minute, inflation is going through the roof. Why are we cutting rates in this backdrop? And the reason is too much fiscal spending 
and now we're get headed to this weird stagflation or massive inflationary phase. Why is this important? Because now well, everyone's thinking, okay, well, I need to hedge against this. What do you do? Do you buy euro? Do you buy dollar? Do you buy gold? Maybe, but also crypto. And that's the invisible kind of pressure for all the crypto ecosystem and the market cap to go up. We've actually seen this before. The country that's experienced this, Japan. Since the 1990s, Japan has spent so much on fiscal stimulus. The government's in massively in debt. I think you guys can just quickly Google the debt to GDP. Japan just stands out. And they've been lowering interest rates to negative interest rates for decades. Now they're starting to actually normalize that. I've spoken to macro traders, you know, well-known macro traders, and they find it really interesting that in this backdrop, where a lot of the, the developed markets are going to start cutting rates, Japan started normalizing interest rates. Why does this matter? It matters for two reasons. Number one, Japan is the biggest creditor nation in the world. What Japan does actually matters a lot in the financial system. If they start normalizing interest rates, this is going to have a massive implication to the financial markets. And the second thing is, given that it's a creditor nation, the government is now looking and, and lots of corporates are looking at incentivized to, to try to get a, a little bit more utility out of all the assets on their balance sheet. What does that mean for us? It means that securitization, STOs, are going to really start picking up with countries like Japan. And let's think about this. You know, at the end of the day, why do we need to even focus about Japan? Well, from 2009, 2015, I mentioned inception phase. Where was the biggest exchange in the world? It was in Japan. 70 to 80% of all crypto trading was in Japan. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's incredible, right? Mt. Gox, I'm sure a lot of people have heard. That was in Shibuya in Japan, and that was where everybody was trading crypto. From 2016 to 2022, what happened? There was a major hack at CoinCheck, and it was one of the first major uh, markets to just come in and lay out the regulatory framework. What happened in Japan then started getting copied in Singapore, UK, ultimately the US. Everybody started putting together a vast regime, uh, tax codes, regulation. So there's a huge implication there. So let's ask ourselves, if, if these were the kind of the lead indicators and a lot of these movements happen in Japan, I think what's going on right now in the STO and real world uh, asset tokenization in Japan is gonna have a major implication for the rest of the world. It's, it's a first mover thing, right? You know, who's gonna actually take the first step to actually look at tokenization in a serious way? And I think in that sense, we need to pay attention to what's going on. Obviously, from real world asset uh, tokenization side, uh, for anyone who's unfamiliar, there are many things that we can tokenize. We have the arts, collectibles, uh, intellectual properties as one. We have real estate debt alternative investments, and this is where it's really picking up right now in Japan, real estate um, uh, tokenization, and also equity and venture capital. I find this to be a fascinating, fascinating uh, topic, and I think this is something that we all have to think about, because now when you launch a business, the traditional way of financing was to go out to VCs, friends and family, you know, whoever to say, hey, we need this capital to, 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 to run this business. Now you have a business plan, you tokenize your business, and then raise money. And the key question is, what are the rules and regulations around you know, issuing STOs? Because as everybody knows, the SEC and other, uh, other bodies are not too fond of just tokenizing all business. But when we look at the benefits, we have cost-effective fundraising, you can embed utility into your business through the token issuance, uh, you have massive broad investor access to both primary and secondary uh, issuance, uh, liquidity, the ability to trade, instant settlements. All of these things is going to be an invisible hand where people are going to start looking seriously at this space. And what I notice right now is that specifically with respect to Japan, STO, or real world asset tokenization, there are methodology that are coming into play now. It's legal framework that allows people to actually tokenize your, your business. One of the things that I've seen so far is just you know, separation of entities. You could be under JSCC or SEC rules in certain uh, regulation, uh, regulatory district, but you set up the issuance and the crypto trading and the crypto uh, operation on a different jurisdiction. So you have two, three separate jurisdiction, which all works together to provide the token issuance and the utility, the buybacks and everything else.
The second thing that I found really interesting, and I, I, from what I'm hearing, it's also happening in Dubai as well, is that you have actual limited partnership corporation or a traditional uh, you know, corporation that you set up, and you convert the shares into token that are then available to trade at respective security firms. This is what's also happening uh, right now. So if we were in Japan and we come up with a great idea to say launch a franchise coffee business, anything, then we can come up with a business plan. It's a, it's a debt issuance through the token. Now, where can you raise the money? You can actually raise the money at designated investment banks and other security sh uh, shops. This is all legal now. And the Japanese government has said, from an STO perspective, no problem at all. Now, there's still a divergence between you know, what we're used to with Coinbase and Binance and other kind of crypto markets, but at least the government has realized that lots of corporations are pushing for this, and they basically said, sure, the green light is there. This is how we're going to start. We've really got to pay attention here because I'm sure everybody has thought about running their own business, fundraising, or whatever you like to do. And this is going to be the new form. And I think STLs in real world asset is going to be what creates utility, the massive utility in this space. So I'm here representing Tokyo Token, who is now spearheading a lot of these efforts. And they've worked on a lot of, uh, a lot of projects with large, large names, large corporates. So Jasmine Token is one of the largest crypto uh, launch that was done in Japan. They work very closely with Sony. Um, they also, for anybody who's been into Japan, they also work very closely with uh, Tokyo Tower, which has a large kind of a uh, virtual reality AR, um, a uh, kind of a, like a conference area at the base of Tokyo Tower. And right now, they're working on a token called LTT, which is linking to travel agencies in Japan. Again, companies are going to companies like Tokyo Token and say, hey, tokenize my business. We're already publicly listed. We don't, we can't, you know, do an, we don't want to do equity issuance. We don't want to do debt issuance. We want to come up with a clever new way to fund projects that they have. And what Tokyo Token does, they consult, they work with the regulators, they work with the uh, law firms, and then they issue these coins on both secondary market and also through uh, the investment bank and other security, licensed security uh, uh, houses, as I mentioned. So we have some of the Tokyo Token teams uh, attending the conference. Uh, Sasaki-san, who's uh, sitting uh, right in front of me, and uh, Kobayashi-san. If you guys are interested in learning more about tokenization space, specifically in Japan, I highly recommend to sit down and speak to the members of Tokyo Token. It's a fascinating topic, and I think everybody needs to kind of understand what's going on in the different jurisdictions so that we get the holistic picture of where we're headed regarding to STOs. Now, from my side, uh, I also have my partner, Nick. So we are partners with Tokyo Token. We introduce uh, companies to Japan. So for anybody who's interested in working and getting clients or investors in Japan, we're happy to sit down and talk to you guys. Uh, we can handhold the process. We can make the introduction. Um, we both have set up many companies in Japan. So this is something that if it's of interest for yourself or anybody you know, please come up to us after this talk, and then we can sit down and discuss uh, next steps. So that was a quick 15-minute uh, chat, and I've got 10 seconds left. So thank you very much, and I hope you guys have a great day.